Hello, my name is Andrew Tatham. I'm a glaucoma consultant at the Princess Alexandra Eye Pavilion and the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. I've been using the Omni Surgical System for about 18 months now, and I found that um, when I introduced it into my practice, that it was a fairly seamless transition. It's great that we have more options for patients. So we can classify the MIGS procedures as with an implant or without an implant. One of the issues potentially with the implant procedures is that they only tackle a small part of the trabecular mesh work and, and when we have any given patient and we're trying to decide on what procedure is best for them we don't know where the obstruction to outflow is so having an, an implant free procedure such as the Omni you know, is, is quite attractive because we know that that will tackle 360 degrees of Schlem's canal and in theory that will maximize our chances of lowering IOP and restoring the physiological aqueous outflow. I found using the Omni system fairly easy, um, but then I had had previous experience with canal-based uh, surgery. Um, but I suppose I can reflect on training residents now and fellows um, to perform um, surgery with the Omni. And um, the feedback that I've had from them and observing them is that it is a, not a particularly difficult procedure to learn. Um, it's very much like um, placing a cannula into a vein. Um, you have ta tactile feedback, you can tell that you're in the right location um, and you feel no resistance whatsoever. Um, so so I, I found the learning curve not particularly steep. I think it's really nice that we now have an increasing number of options for treatments without implants um, because one of the limitations of, of the implants, implants themselves is that they only treat a small portion of the outflow system. Um, they only bypass a small area of the uh, trabecular meshwork. Whereas um, procedures without implants, we can treat the whole 360 degrees of Schlem's canal. And one of the issues that we have is that when we have a patient before us, we, do, we don't know where the outflow resistance is. Um, and so by tackling 360 degrees, we can maximize our chances of, of lowering intraocular pressure. I think something that's really important when you're starting canal-based MIG surgery is, is to develop the skills in interoperative gonioscopy. And um, gonioscopy, we're, we're very used to doing it on the slit lamp, but uh, performing it interoperatively is different because the landmarks are different. Um, and um, I think an important tip is to practice gonioscopy in patients that you aren't necessarily going to be doing angle surgery on. So I found that um, I would do a routine cataract operation and then pop a gonio lens on and check the angle and and I think um, getting the position of the patient's head the position of the operating microscope is key and it just comes through practice So the time that it takes to perform an Omni procedure really depends on whether you're performing it as a standalone procedure or combined with cataract surgery. Um, and one of the advantages of Omni is that you can do both. Um, now, if it's combined with cataract surgery, my preference is to perform it after the cataract operation, but that isn't essential. Some people perform it first. Um, and I think it's very similar to some of the other canal-based mix, mix procedures in that it would add about five minutes onto the case. Um, for standalone cases, it obviously takes a little longer, there's some preparation involved, but you know, 10 to 15 minutes is probably a typical amount of time. But certainly we don't want to rush, we want to take our time, do things properly. I think one of the things um, that is another advantage with Omni in terms of the workflow in theatre is that you can perform it on your own. You don't need to rely on a scrub nurse um, to help you, um, to help you deliver the uh, viscoelastic, for instance. And that, that also just makes things a little bit smoother are a little bit more efficient. Well, I've been seeing good results with the Omni system. Um, in 
typically um, post-operative intraocular pressures have been around about 14 to 15 on average. So um, you know, one of the advantages of canal-based surgery is that we have that protection from episcleral venous pressure. So we, we're not so worried about hypotony and, and, the, and the complications associated with that. So one of the potential advantages of the Omni is that we can perform it as a standalone procedure. So traditionally, MIGS procedures have been performed combined with cataract surgery. And that's a really nice option for patients who have a cataract, who are on one or two glaucoma medications, who want, who want to reduce their medication burden. But what about the patient who is phakic without a cataract or who is pseudophakic, who has high pressure and we don't necessarily want to perform a subconjunctival procedure. It's really nice to have um, a canal-based um, option, an option that doesn't produce a bleb with all the potential risks associated with blebs. And uh, certainly in my experience, I've seen particularly young patients with very high pressure respond really well to a standalone Omni. So my advice for anybody who's interested in starting Omni is to first become comfortable with interoperative gonioscopy. Second, think about the right patient selection. And initially, I found that performing Omni combined with cataract surgery was uh, comfortable. Um, if a patient is already attending for a cataract operation and you're improving their vision and you can lower their pressure and reduce their medication burden at the same time, then that's a that's great starting point. But I think it's, it's then nice to transition to Omni as a standalone procedure um, because that's often where we see really impressive results. Um, the other piece of advice I would have is to try and initially standardise the procedure. Um, and one of the nice things about Omni is that it is titratable to the patient. It, there's more than one procedure. We can perform uh, canaloplasty and trabeculotomy. Um, but I found that I wanted to audit my results and therefore standardise what I was doing. So for every patient, initially I performed a 360 degree canaloplasty and a 180 degree trabeculotomy. But then once you're comfortable with that, you're happy with your results, you could then titrate the treatment to the individual patient. I think some of the key benefits of Omni are that, well, number one, it's implant free. And so we don't have those potential long term concerns of complications related to implants. Um, the second is the mechanism of action because um, we're tackling not just resistance to outflow at the level of the trabecular meshwork, but we're also dealing with 360 degree of Schlem's canal, but also the distal outflow pathway as well. So there's those three levels of action. And then lastly, I think, is the ease of use. Um, the learning curve is short and it has that big advantage of not needing an assistant to help with the um, delivery, delivering the um, viscoelastic. Mm -hmm.